because I have grown and matured in the Word. Amen. You get to a place that you realize that true faith is not defined by the things you have. But it's not defined by the successes that we have had in life. It cannot be measured by the amount of money that we have in our bank accounts. But true faith is defined by the things you have survived. True faith is defined by the things you survive. You see, it's easy for a person that hasn't survived any hardships to boast in their blessings when they haven't gone through very much. Uh, you see, uh, to express confidence in their walk when they've rarely, rarely lit a, a slip or much less fallen. Can I tell you, I don't put much weight in that. But I'll tell you what, you show me somebody who's gone through hell a time or two, let me show me somebody who bears the scars of this walk. Uh, even in our carnal sense, uh, this doesn't have much value, but I'll show you where great faith really resides. Uh, you show me somebody who has seen their life uh, turn tops and turban, didn't know where they were going to go, but kept on walking with Jesus, who's lost a lost love, good loved one, and said, I don't know why you took them from a God, but I know one thing, it must be because you want to know me and show me some more. Show me somebody who's had it all, lost it all, and still living with Jesus, and I'll show you faith. So I'll come tell somebody this morning that many of the things that God gives to us is initially give, given to us in a less than pure form. You see, desire is a gift from God. But it manifests itself in the form of lust. Faith is a gift from God. But it manifests itself as ego and ambition. Virtue, something we all have, if we're not careful, it manifests itself as pride. You see, when we give our lives to God, many of the things that we'll face along the way have purposes beyond our understanding. When we give our lives to God, and I don't mean, let's just bring this down a little bit. I don't mean when you first come to God. You see, because I'm constantly giving my life to God. Amen. I, I daily, by the Bible, Paul said, I die daily. Amen. So whatever rises up in his stead is a new man. And that new man has to, again, give itself to God. Why? Because then how do you know when God went right and you keep going straight? Come on now. Yeah. How many times have you felt like you're walking with God and suddenly you feel like, where's God? Well, uh, he hung right about a year ago, and you just kept on walking because you never took time out of your day to stop and say, flesh, die. Jesus, where are you? Where are we going today? Not this year, not next year. Where are we going today? We need to know where he's at all the time. Too frequently, church, and that, that's what the commonality uh, comes into our thinking. That's how it comes, because I know that I'm living for God. And I walk with God, and I pray in the morning, and I sing in the afternoon. I have my Wednesday afternoon to prepare for my Thursday, and I have my Friday night and my Saturday to prepare for my Sunday. This is just a very, it's like skipping rope. I know how to do this. I can do this with my eyes closed. I can do it with the well, right foot, left foot. I can do it with my crossover. Oh, you don't know. I mean, I can double hot scotch. You just don't know. And God said, but you jump up there. Huh. And I'm playing hopscotch. I'm on now. Yeah. Give her. Amen. Oh, yeah. I've done that too. But when you don't do something frequently, it wears off. The sharpness and the crispness wears off. And you just think, you better probably like, oh, I've done that before. I've ridden a bike. Just got to get back to the bike. I can ride a bike right now. I'll tell you something. I got up on a bike not long ago. Weirdest looking contraption I've ever seen in my life. Pick up the bike. It's like, what is this? 
I mean titanium frame, I mean alloy rims, little old bitty tires about that big. I thought, you ain't expecting me to hit on that thing with the little tires, huh? You see the tires on my car? I got four of them out of the And you want me to get on that bike that don't hardly weigh more than my backpack with little tires like that, and then they're bald. He says, oh, no, no, when you get going fast enough, they heat up and they grab the road. I said, brother, I don't expect to go that fast. <laughs> and so although I've ridden the bike many, many, many a times, I kind of passed on it. I said, no. You see, things change, church. Life changes. And just because God says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever, I change not. Doesn't mean that God doesn't move in different places Amen. and different ways. Right. It doesn't mean that God doesn't manifest Himself. I don't know who you are this morning, but you have been in various churches. You've gone to various places and God met you there. But somehow God happened to take you and move you somewhere else. And whoa, lo and behold, God was there for you too. And then He picks you up and He moves you somewhere else. And guess what? He's there with you too. But then every once in a while we move. And I can't find Him. One preacher said, some are called, some are sent, and some just went. Amen. I don't know about you, but I never want to go anywhere without Jesus. Right. I don't ever want to go anywhere without the precious Spirit of God leading my every step. Making sure that I am in the proper place at the proper time. Here in the church, when we just take life as ordinary and everything comes to you as just a common, ordinary day. Can I tell you, that's why we miss the supernatural moves of God in our lives. You want to feel a fresh anointing? Then you got to get in the prayer room with Jesus Christ daily. You need to crucify that flesh and say, God, I am going to walk out of here with a new anointing, with a new vision, with a new desire. You ever felt like just giving up? Can I tell you, did you feel like that after you come out of a prayer closet with Jesus? I don't know about you, but I never have. I felt like quitting before, and I said, God, i got to find you. Job said, I don't know where you're at. I, I will look in front of you, not there. Behind me, you're not there. To the left, to the right. I don't know where you're at, but I do know something. You are omnipresent. And as long as I keep pursuing, as long as I keep looking, as long as I keep knocking, you're going to answer. Yes. Amen. We just want to say, well, the Lord doesn't love me. The Lord doesn't care about me. The Lord has forsaken me. The devil says, that's right. That's right. That friend you call a friend. I don't know about you, but if I was your friend, I wouldn't do that to you. I would never take you down those roads. And I would never give you that kind of advice. Can I tell somebody... The devil will never change. He's a liar and I don't care how good it sounds. I don't care how good it tastes. I don't care how good it feels. Hear me when I tell you, you got to just keep pursuing Jesus Christ. And if you're not pursuing Him, then you need to go ahead and find Him once again and let Him renew you. You see, Jeremy said that, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, Amen. as though some strange thing has happened to you. What's in my scriptures this morning? Nina, you opened it up for me. And I know when I'm, when I'm where God wants me to be, when, when Brother Jeremy happens to rattle off scriptures, it's not the first time, and you've done this with me many a time, but hear me, church, there's something about where trying to transition us. God has been trying to transition us, but He's saying to us, 